We're back. We're live here at the Juniper Post Game Commentary. We're here Robert White Lee from Forrester Networks. I'm John Furrier with SiliconAngle.com and SiliconAngle.tv. We're inside the cube for the post analysis of the Juniper Networks mobile security software suite, defending your mobile life is their slogan. Um, Robert, you're an analyst at Forrester. You cover infrastructure, IT enterprise, um, security. Um, this is kind of a game-changing announcement. This as we were joking earlier, could change the internet forever. Yep. Mobility um, is out there. We saw some historic kind of uh, action on the marketplace this week. Ray Ozzie yep. wrote his farewell kind of uh, uh, memo to the troops, basically saying, end of an error, mobility's here. What's your view of what Juniper's done here today and uh, with this announcement? So just go through sure. you know the highlights and then just your commentary. Yeah, abs absolutely, and I, you know, I, I do agree this is you know, we're sort of at a game-changing inflection point. I know it's a little bit cliche to say that, but but this is one of the few examples where demand is far outstripping supply, right? The demand for mobile technologies, the demand for information, and, and quite frankly now with a very business-oriented view, and I'll get into what I mean by that, uh, I think is, is far ahead of traditional technology suppliers. And more importantly, it's ahead of your service provider. It's ahead of your, your IT department or whomever may be traditionally supplying you. And, and what I mean by that is we, we've heard, you know, everybody will paint a little bit of a different view in terms of, is this a revolution? What I would say is we're in sort of a second wave of mobility. The first one was about productivity and it was about getting a key set of capabilities anywhere, anytime, mm -hmm. right? Very standard. I would argue that in a second wave, it goes well beyond productivity. It's actually about solving customer challenges where the customers are. It's about going to that customer and, and doing a flashy demo or, or being able to supply them with information. And if nothing else, I think we have learned that because of social media and, and because of all the different waves of internet, you don't get to, to sort of take the time. You have to do it immediately, it's in the moment. So as a result, these all of these employees are empowering themselves. They're, they're taking their mobile devices on the road, they're, they're going out, they're, they're getting in front of customers. And they have more mobile devices. They have the standard oh, yeah. issued BlackBerry or approved device by the corporation. Right. And they're like saying, screw that, I want my iPhone, <laughs> I want an Android phone. Right. right? And, 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 and the apps are driving the adoption. It, it is, and, and, and so, so what you're keying in on is, is this demand angle. And what, what I would say real quickly is, look, the, the floodgates are open. IT's not in control of this at all. You, you can't go to your IT department and say, here's the list of seven devices that I could potentially use in the next six months. I, I need support for all of them. So what I really liked about what Juniper was saying today is, first of all, they're supporting all of it, right? This isn't like the desktop world where it was 99% Windows and 1% Apple, right? It's, it's heterogeneous day one. I mean, there's there's no, monop there's no Wintel There's anymore. no monopoly. I mean, Wintel was a force. Right. It was a monopoly. Yep. Not anymore. And, and what's important is an IT department could standardize on something when it was a monopoly, because I would just say, all right, well, here's what I'm going to do in this scenario. Yeah. When it's this explosion, it's, in, it's impossible. And I think what's critical is that IT say, look, we don't want to control this. We want to enable it, and we're actually going to push control to you as the user. You find out what to do when you lose your device or when you want to add a second device, because we all know that every single time a new iPhone comes out, we all want it. Right, so, so the more self-service, and, and to me that was one of the biggest announcements I heard today, is that I can get service from my service provider, from my IT department, or I can do it myself. And I think that's the kind of choice that matches the explosion innovation we've seen in mobility. Um, and then, you know, push accountability onto me. Uh, I'll wipe the device if I lose it. It's a lot better than calling up the IT department and sort of sheepishly announcing I left my BlackBerry in the back of a New York City cab, right? Yeah, yeah. Which actually a lot of people won't do. So it's a big so deal. So this explosion, I mean, it's a great way to frame it. I mean, totally agree. We're on the same page there. I mean, we're Silicon Angle, so we talk about is this mobile explosion. But you hit on a couple key things. Control. Yep. IT has always been in control. Yep. And so this explosion of demand, the consumers driving change, a couple things have happened. There's been change on the IT side, they lost control. And on the mobility side, more devices have more functionality. Now the carriers don't have control. They had SMS, now you got marketplaces, you got the app store, you know, the consumer's doing more stuff. Yep. So you have more freedom, more liberation from a user experience standpoint, 
but yet this security, the control on the, on the provider side, um, is going to open up a whole door of threats. And then the IT side, the silos, the stack wars, Oracle, the monopoly, all this stuff is like old school. Yep. That stuff's not working anymore. Yep. I mean, what's your angle on that? I mean, is it is it the perfect storm where essentially a rip and replace is happening? Is it a rip and replace? Is it incremental improvement? What are some of the strategies you're seeing out there around this uh, these disruptive forces? Yeah. So, you know, it might be a little bit controversial to say it's rip and replace, but I, I truly believe it is, and, and here's why. Because it's, it's being funded by the individual. They're buying the device. In fact, uh, our data shows 37% of the time they paid for the device out of their own pocket. So that, that's a really interesting phenomenon because IT isn't on the hook to support the build-out. The users are bringing it. All the users are saying is just give me it's access. It's organic build-out. Yeah. The users are, you're it's very in a way, organic and rogue, if you yep. will. In, but exactly. they want it. And so, so that enables rip and replace because IT isn't on the hook to, to go back and say, okay, well, shoot, we had it wrong the last five years. Let's throw out everything we were doing and put it with this new. They're, the the users are, are adding net new, and I'm just being told I need to support it. And, and what's interesting is, and if I were to give advice to anyone, you have to think about it as not standardizing on the device or even the OS. You have to think about it as standardizing on the capability. I want to enable email. I want to enable the ability to, to add any app. That's a capability. Now, underneath the hood, I have to offer it probably across four different OSs and 2,000 different devices. Yeah, yeah. But before, when I said I want to enable email, that was code for I'm going to put a Bez server in place and I'm going to enable BlackBerry. And, and that was standardizing our technology. You, you just can't standardize in this world. It's too volatile. So, question for you. You've been following the marketplace. How does Juniper pull this off? I mean, Juniper's known. We've, I've been following Juniper for years. I mean, they bought NetScreen, yep. big firewall acquisition. You know, they've been talking branch office security. So, let's talk about diversity of access method. Mm -hmm. Classic networking problem, pretty hardened, pretty you know high performance, high security. Yeah, you lock down a branch office, calls the home enterprise headquarters, home office, DSL, whatever. I mean, that's just one access point. But now mobility is completely a whole nother dimension. How does yep. Juniper get there? And is it, you know, is it a stretch? Can, is it extensible? What's your angle on that? And how would you describe that for folks out there around understanding that concept of you know, lock down a branch office, secure, to now phone, soccer game, baseball game, you know, moving around, subway, lost phones, yeah. malware. And I, so there's, and there's probably two or three different angles here. First of all, coming from a position of strength within the network is critical, right? The network is the connective tissue, it's the glue. Um, and, and previously, networking industries, networking vendors, Solutions, Cisco, Juniper, all those vendors, they were very insular. So they looked at it and said, okay, how can I reduce the complexity of my solution within the network? It's actually about how do I reduce complexity of all the things the network could possibly touch. And what I see what Juniper is saying is they're saying, okay, well, if we want to reduce the amount of complexity of these mobile devices, which are obviously a mobile endpoint, and touching our network, then we have to have a footprint there. But what's also kind of refreshing is they're being a little humble about it, and they're kind of saying uh, an Intel inside strategy, right? We're there, we're on the device, but we're actually going to have a minimum footprint, a minimum experience. Let Apple do what Apple does well and create the device experience. We'll be under the hood. Let Android do what it does well. So no is, land grab. Right. They're not really land grabbing in a classic sense. They are. Now, they're so putting that, the functionality, letting that do the talking. Right, and, and that's important. However, their secret weapon is the service provider, right? Because they need a way to monetize this, um, and, and more importantly, they're going to be the channel. I mean, as we've seen, when you go to buy your device, you probably either go to the device store, or more likely you're going to go to your carrier, uh, whether you're a business user or not, and, and you're going to expect that they're going to have an answer to this. Um, and I think that's where Juniper has a, a good strength, is they've done a, a good job day one saying, here's how we can help an AT&T or a BT you know, monetize this, or in some cases give it away for yeah, free, yeah, but yeah. at least it's, it's, so again, it's sort of that Intel inside. They're not the thrust of the solution, they're just kind of yeah. enabling those that, that want to own And the, the carriers inside. too are changing too, because you know, at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona this past February, you know, it was pr the genie was out of the bottle. I mean, they, the, 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 the search price lost control. Yeah. They had their killer app, they had SMS over the years, locked down, you know, minimal capability of a phone. You call people and you text people, that's yep. it. Uh, now you have the tsunami of apps um, happening over the top content consumption. You have a diversity of content types: social media to social networking, whatever you yep. name it. Um, how is that affecting the service price? Is is this um, an extension of that wake-up call? And do they really need to offer these solutions? 
either for free or they're charging it, business model. I mean, this seems to be the big issue that, that, that people are kind of talking about now is, one, how do they make money? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, some surveys say yeah. that the average cost, average revenue per client is anywhere up to two grand, $2,000 per user. Yep. So they got to keep, keep them on the network. Yep. So, so I, I agree, and I think there's, there's sort of two aspects to this. Security, which is the antivirus, the personal firewall, there's, there's some technical controls that I can put in place. I personally think that's going to actually be free. I think the service providers should say, you know, just like it's always been free in the consumer space, there's sort of a good enough. But then beyond security, there's this concept of control. Um, how do I track the device? How do I turn it off? How do I turn it on? How do I make it scream when it's lost? Or even when I'm just looking for it, like I look for my keys, right? That's something I'm willing to pay for because that's more interesting than security. It's a little bit more visceral, you know, malware. That's kind of hard to conceptualize, but I, I can imagine my because device. There's value in that. There's personal value data. Right. So I think it's a two-step. It's a, it's a giveaway enough to be a little bit of a hook and then monetize control on top of that. Whether it's enabling an end user or an enterprise or even the carrier, it doesn't really matter, but that's a valuable thing I'll pay more for. Um, and I think, uh, th th and that's what's interesting about this announcement, by the way, is they're actually tying it both in. H historically, the security and, and the mobile device management or the management were two separate things, yeah, yeah. And, and no one's cracked the nut of bringing it together yet. So let's talk about the marketplace and then kind of society in general. So the marketplace, obviously, you know, VCs are investing in a boatload of companies, mm -hmm. emerging companies, companies we've never seen before, have a new look and feel. Kleiner Perkins just announced a $250 million social fund. Google, Apple going head-to-head, -head, Android to the set-tops, Logitech launching with Google TV. There's a slew of stuff going on in the market that has this mobility network feel to it. Yep. Then you have, you know, society in general, people's data, is their, their mobile phones, their life. I mean, their, their SMS, their gestural data, what they do, their geolocation. I yep. mean, there's some serious intimate data involved in the mobile phone. Yep. Um, what, have you, what are you seeing in the ecosystem, in the landscape? Any new companies emerging? Any trends that, that you can talk about uh, from your research and your observations? Um, any kind of new categories? Is there anything you could share around yeah. that top of the, uh, the value? Yep. So. So I, I agree with your premise. The, the, this, the, the absolute, again, explosion we see in this space is, is unparalleled. And I think it, it's interesting. I mean, to say we're in the information era is a little bit of an understatement. It, it's information yeah. overload in many cases. Yeah. So I actually think um, the, the, the next hot area is actually going to be in analytics. What do I do with all this data? How do I either look at the trends in, in, in consumer behavior to make the next best product decision if I'm a sort of a consumer product company, or as a business, how do I look into all of this information to make an informed business decision? So I think what we've, the last 18 months, and probably still another 18 months into the future, is going to still be just foundational, right? Getting key devices and key capabilities and allowing this. Then I think what you're going to find is service providers, big software players are going to come in on the top, and they're going to add their value by making sense of this uh, information. I mean, like you said, just, just adding something as simple as geotagging suddenly explodes the amount of information I now have around my employees, my customers, etc. So I think that's going to be a lot. And, and then, you know, because security is what's hot now, and then I think analytics will be next. Okay, we're, we're here with uh, Forrester Research uh, giving us the, the lowdown. Final question, next five years out, just from a personal perspective, not in Forrester, but you know mm -hmm. your personal opinion, what do you think is going to unfold out there mm -hmm. uh, in, in mobile security infrastructure? IT is lost control. I mean, if they don't retool, they're, they're going to be irrelevant. Yep. Not a lot of people have been happy in IT. If you worked in IT for the past ten years, it's not been a fun, fun ride. Yep. But people are excited right now. There's kind of energy, and then there's kind of the old guard, kind of the mainframe mindsets, if you will. So yep. it's kind of new energy. Um, carriers are totally acknowledging an over the top, a new content sources. Anything next five years that you, you see evolving? Yeah, so uh, I'll first comment on uh, personally what I think is going to happen to the traditional IT department. Uh, I think it's going to get hollowed out a bit. Um, and that's, you know, typically that was a punitive thing. I, I don't think this is bad because I don't think jobs are going to be lost. I think IT people are, are going to be freed up to join the ranks of customer service and others in, in trying to help solve problems. Right, so, so my help desk is going to get transformed into a customer service desk, just like my call center is uh, for, for, for typical inbound call channels. 
So I think there's going to be an interesting push away from it because a lot of this is going to be about self-service. It's going to be about letting users take care of themselves. A lot of automation discussions going on. A lot on. of automation. And so, so you know, previously we talked about automating ourselves out of a job. I think it's sort of pushing us into a new one. But I think that, that, that's one key thing. I think the second key thing I would say, though, is that uh, we haven't even, I think, begun to, to tap into all the new applications that are, that are going to be coming out. And so I think you're going to see the rise of the uh, sort of developer by night. You know, right now a lot of people are trying to figure out how do I make the next, you know, <laughs> app that farts and gets me $2 million by yeah, yeah. tomorrow. I don't think that's going to be about. I think it's going to be about people going home and saying, okay, well, my business has this problem. I'd love to write this application. And, and so I think we're going to see a lot of innovation, but focused less on consumer and more on business. But it's going to be driven by those consumers, those people that go at home at night, not trying to make money. They're just trying to, to, to stay relevant in their job. Okay, we hear Robert Whiteley from Forest Research. It's going to be driven by the consumer change. IT is going to be hollowed out and repurposed, but not going to kill any jobs. Appreciate the commentary. Okay. Juniper Network's big uh, game-changing uh, announcement with mobility. It's going to change the internet forever. Uh, in my opinion, <laughs> mobility is real. It's not hype. People want it. The demand's like, crushing it. Appreciate all your comments. All Thanks. Right. Thank you. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks. Okay, next up we have one minute. We're going to be right back in one minute. We're inside the cube, siliconangle.com, siliconangle.tv. You can follow the reruns and the restreams on siliconangle.tv.